Hi there, I'm Dre, the host and founder of The Dragon Network, an online member-based community where health IT professionals can share ideas, discuss experiences, and collaborate with one another on all things related to health IT. For today's video, I want to talk about one of the standards that's used very heavily across medical imaging, and that is DICOM. So I'm just going to provide a brief overview of the standard, what it is and really what it's focused on, and then we'll maybe do a deep dive later on in another video if this one seems helpful for people. So before I get started, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, please go ahead and do that now. And as always, throughout the video, if you like the content that you're seeing, don't forget to hit that like button so that I know and can gauge what to put out there for the future. Okay, so let's jump in. Looking back to 1983, the American College of Radiology and the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, or NEMA, got together to try to put together a standard for communication of digital information. After a couple iterations and a much needed shortening of their combined name, the ACR NEMA committee in 1993 released version three of what is now known as DICOM. And DICOM stands for Digital Imaging and Communications in Medicine. While there's been regular updates over the past few decades, the version that we are still using today is version 3, and there is actually no intention to release a version 4. So we often think of DICOM as focusing on image parameters, and it actually focuses on quite a bit more than that. It encompasses all of the elements necessary for digital imaging interoperability. So that's going to include capture through interpretation, storage, and sharing of those digital media files. It is definitely one of the most prolific digital imaging standards that's used today around the world, and it's used for imaging equipment such as CT scanners, MRI machines, and handheld ultrasounds, image processing devices and display workstations and monitors, image archive systems such as PAC systems, and image output devices such as printers, photo transparency film, and things like that. So as of right now, there are 22 different components to the DICOM standard, and I'm going to put a link in the description so that you can dive in and learn a little bit more about each of those 22 component sections if that's something that you're interested in. DICOM files themselves have an extension of DCM, and they are comprised of several different data objects, each with their own set of attributes known as IODs. You're going to get information within each of those attributes from a variety of different sources. For example, patient information is going to have things like patient name, demographics, relevant problem list information, and things like that, usually coming from a connected clinical system or an EHR. The image pixel data that's contained within that DICOM image file is going to come from the biomedical device uh, machines themselves, so for example, the CT scanner. And then we're also going to see imaging information that is going to be entered by the radiologists in the radiology information system that they're using. That's going to contain things like the modality, the positioning, the interpretations, whether it's a preliminary or a final reading, all sorts of great information is going to come from there. So you've got several different systems connecting together and pulling in to really contribute the components and the attributes to that DICOM file so that it is sort of a holistic and comprehensive file that contains information about that image. One of the things that's important to note about the DICOM standard is it dictates that each DICOM object can only have one attribute that contains pixel data. So to ensure that this doesn't hinder interoperability for things like CT scans or MRI images, the attribute can contain multiple files or frames. And similarly, DICOM can allow for multi-dimensional, so three or four dimensional objects to be contained within a single object. So why does DICOM work? Why has it been around for so long and why is it so prolific as the standard for medical imaging? There's two things that really hinder interoperability when we're looking at exchanging data between systems. And those are getting everyone to agree what the standard should be in the first place and making sure that there's enough organizations or entities that are using it for it to be meaningful as an interoperable exchange standard. So DICOM has actually managed to address both of these with a fairly high level of success. It's almost unheard of to purchase in this day and age an application or a piece of biomedical imaging equipment that doesn't support the standard of DICOM. Of course, there are other medical imaging standards, but DICOM, just because over time it has become embedded in so many things and it has been embraced by so many different organizations in so many different countries, is the standard that almost every healthcare organization follows. We are also starting to see more DICOM standard use in areas like dentistry and ophthalmology because the standard, of course, is for all types of medical imaging. It is not just focused on radiology type images. 
And as things evolve over time, the DICOM standards committee is also looking to evolve some of their standards around hold slide imaging, DICOM RESTful services, and DICOM web. So this particular standard is one that's going to be around for a very long time. If you are working in the radiology department or in a department of medical imaging or an area that utilizes medical images fairly heavily, it is one of the standards that you'll need to be familiar with for interoperability. And I hope this very brief overview of what the standard encompasses was helpful to you. As I mentioned earlier, I'll put a couple links in the description below so you can read more into it if you'd like to. And I will also consider putting out another video in the future that dives a little bit deeper into some of those components if there's particular areas of this standard that you're interested in learning about. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and I will see you again soon.